This is my Marvel Mark II S35 from Kinefinity. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the burning questions you all have, as well as going through the menu and the external features of this camera from my testing. Now this might sound boring to some of you, but a video like this would have helped me greatly as I was trying to get as much information about this camera. But now that it's finally out and it's in my hand, I'm going to try to provide that content to you all. And yes, there's going to be a whole video about the color science and how I use it and all the other jazz, so that's gonna be coming later. I need to spend more time with this camera to give a much more informed um, answer to that question and how I like it and things like that. Now, in order for this channel to keep growing and do the things I wanna do with it, brands like CRD Bag, you guys have seen it, you guys see it all over the place. This is actually a fantastic way to organize your gear. I do have a link in the description. I do get a kickback. Again, it's to support the channel, but I really believe in this product because Everybody needs to be organized, especially as a filmmaker. But I just want to say, check out CRD bags. It's worth taking a look. Link in the description and a discount code. Everything's there, so make sure to check that out. Why did I purchase the S35 over the full frame? Couple of reasons. One, I think full frame is overrated to a certain extent. Two, the price of the body versus the LF, I would get more for my money in the long run than getting the $6,000 camera and just have the camera. The frame rates in this camera, you have way more options because it is Super 35. And lastly, it is a newer sensor, uh, which leads me to my next question that I was getting a lot. Is this the XH2S sensor or similar sensor? And to be honest, I just don't know. There's been things that have been floating around. I did get some information, but nothing substantial and there hasn't been any, any official word whether or not it is. So I'm not gonna even worry about it. You shouldn't worry about it as well. Just know that there are some really great specs about this sensor and it is the newer one from Kin Infinity. Now the whole rolling shutter question mark that everybody's been wondering if you've been hearing chatter or been in the Facebook groups. Uh, this is something that I think has stemmed from the rumor of this being the same sensor as the X-H2S. And that's putting me in some trouble and a lot of other people in some trouble. And I say that because since the sensor is so good in the X-H2S, when it comes to rolling shutter, it's about 11 milliseconds. That's really great for a rolling shutter Super 35 camera. We all expected this camera to perform. Now, I say this with a little asterisk because as I'm learning about this camera and rolling shutter, I'm not sitting here trying to defend it. It's not great. And full open gate, full resolution, whatever, there is significant wiggle and jello. It reminds me of the Black Magic camera that I previously owned, the 6K Pro. The rolling shutter in those cameras were not great at all. Uh, but that's only with longer lenses. So there's a whole perception thing happening here with the rolling shutter and lenses. So the longer the lens you have, the way more noticeable the rolling shutter will be. And that's what I've noticed from my testing. When I put on a wide lens, like 12 mil, 20 mil, 35, the rolling shutter is significantly lessened. So it's not so much correcting it, it's not doing that. It's probably still the same rolling shutter, but the appearance of it is not as significant as on a longer lens. So that's what I have to say about this. I'm hoping Kinefinity will address this and make um, updates to have it, you know, read out. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do about it, but it is something that they should address. But when I notice it on wider lenses, it's not as bad. So I don't really care. I shoot on a lot of wider lenses anyway. When it's on longer lenses, that's when you kind of run into a few things in the full resolution. If that makes sense, that's what's happening with this camera. Man, I feel like I'm talking a mile a minute. You know, I was recording eight minutes. Uh, footage stopped it and realized this mic was not on the entire time. So I'm just going to just walk you through the external features and uh, things about this camera as this is part of the whole walkthrough. So let's just jump right into it. I'm gonna start at the front. What I really love about this integration of uh, a much more seamless rig build is one, just this cable, the monitor and camera relationship is one cable. This is a 14 pin uh, Limo style cable. Um, there are two ports here, which deliver power, uh, camera control uh, through the Kinney OS and so they have two options which is the 7 inch and the 5 inch. I opted to get the 7 inch because it's just a bigger screen. There's no difference other than size. They're both 2000 nits. They both run the OS and you get all the same features that are in here. I just wish that they put EL zone. I feel kind of foreign again using a 
false color again. So going back to the front, you have a lens port, which allows you to run power to the fizz unit and the motors that you have on the camera. Um, you can daisy chain it and then draw power from the camera through the V-mount battery, which is pretty fantastic. Those are all the ports there. So, oh, and the second unit you can use for another Kenny monitor or their fantastic EVF, which I plan to get down the way. And you can attach both monitor and EVF for a really clean setup and minimal wires. But like I was saying before, if you watched my unboxing video, the, the versatility of this camera when it comes to lenses is just such a breath of fresh air to see. You can actually switch this out from, you know, the Kini mount, which you can have multiple types of adapters. This has right now currently a, a active E mount and I have a PL adapter, or you can get an actual PL solid mount directly on this camera or have uh, the VND option with EF and PL. Uh, since the Marvel S35 does not have built-in NDs, so you can just put NDs in the front of your lens or get the adapters to have the built-in ENDs. In terms of the whole ND situation, I did pick up the Nitsi C5 matte box. Out of all the matte boxes that offer sort of this variable ND type thing, I chose this one because it went up to 95 diameter for a lens front. So, so far, I haven't had any real issues. Right now I'm running a uh, black satin, um, a full stop, or sorry, one fourth stop and on top of their true color variable ND. So I'll kind of report back to how I feel about this a little later, maybe in another video, maybe in this video, but that's what I'm using right now for all my lenses. These are all your dedicated hard wire buttons. There's no way to customize it from my understanding. There is a customized feature by pages, but nothing you can change of these buttons. They're all dedicated. So you have frames per second, you have shutter iris if you have the active PL or EF electronic lenses, you can actually change the iris through the camera. Menu, playback, audio, LUT, and then you have your punch in, your EI or ISO. I changed mine to EI. Both base or native ISOs are 800 and 3200, just so you know. In this case, Indies. And again, like I said, if you had the PL or EF built-in NDs for the adopter. You can change it here and press it once and then kind of cycle through. And then you have your white balance and then your return button. Record button here, your dial, which has a button in the middle, your door for your uh, SSD, the Mavo Mark IIs, the LF, and this one only has one slot versus the 6K Edge and 8K Edge has two slots. And then your eject button for your battery, and which is a V-mount battery. Wish there was a gold mount option, but here we are. If I was to swing around real quick to the top of here, Yes, love. What's that? Okay, put them back in there. That's mine. No, 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 no. Like I was saying, you have two XLR ports, which are phantom power, and I'm working on a spec right now, which I'm going to be using the internal preamps in this camera, so you'll probably see a little bit of that in this video. Daddy, look. Wow. That's so good. Why? <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stop there. So I got going to the very back of it. I could take this off, but there is another slot for a BPU or um, like a regular Sony uh, MPF battery to slide in here. Uh, but this does take V-mount. Uh, the power withdrawal for this camera is about 27 watts. Uh, this is a 150 watt hour battery, but I'm only at maybe 67% that it says right here. A full battery gave me about six and a half hours or so which is really great. But yeah, swinging around from there, let's go to the opposite side. And this is one of the reasons why I picked up this camera because all the ports that it has for a production or first AC to plug up everything they need. So this camera can be as proficient as possible while on set. So you do have Wi-Fi and it does come with the antenna. I did replace that for a smaller one, um, but it does have an app. There's a sync port, there's a run stop port here, two SDIs, you can do clean feed with log or without log. And just a note, this only shoots in log, <laughs> not, not in log, like Nikon log, like you can only shoot log for this, which is fine by me. Time code and then a DCN for powering off of bus. On the Edge 6K and 8K, you do get an extra d type port and some other, I think, IOs as well. Um, but this does have a headphone jack and USB-C. But I do want to talk about this monitor real quick. So what I love about this layout is very RE-like or red-like. You get all the information, the necessary information that you need to know all around around the image rather than on top of it. Now this is a touchscreen monitor, but the touchscreen is quite laggy. Like the OS isn't as refined. So it's better to just kind of run the commands 
on the physical monitor itself. You do have a physical scroll wheel here that you can click into. You have two buttons here that you can click into for sub um, settings as well. And then you have your power switch. And then the top of here is an actual record button and menu button. And so if you actually press once on the scroll wheel, it'll enable the waveform. And then if you press it again, but if you long press it, it'll enable brightness and rotation that you can change those settings. And then if you press and hold button one, enables false color. I really wish they bring in EL zone, but that's gonna be hopefully coming in a later time. And then you press and hold to remove it, but if you press a light tap, it brings up your histogram. And then same thing with two, light tap, it just a punch in real quick, and then you can use the scroll wheel to kind of go around. And if you press and hold two, it brings up your peaking. Now I really hope they change the peaking because right now it, it actually covers the entire image. So if you bring up your menu here, like your menu gets highlighted too. And I really just hate that. It just doesn't look great. I want my peaking to only affect my image, not my menu settings. So I just want to say that, but if you press and hold that, it turns off. But this is a very clean way of seeing all your information that you need. And if I want to go quickly to like record format, and then go to resolution here. I'm gonna go through all the menu settings as well. So this is just like a quick preview. But if I wanna go that, do that crop and then have that crop there. And you can set up custom pages to quickly go to all your, your specific uh, record settings and formats um, from here. Another thing to note, it's not like a tap. You can tap to certain settings. You have to scroll everything, which is that lag, where that lag kind of comes into play. Like you can tap, you tap on, the setting that you want to control, but then you have to scroll on it. I wish it was all just a tap and eventually just all way more responsive. So again, you can just control everything from the scroll wheel, which is a lot faster that way. And then, you know, kind of go through that. So you would press like, you know, your shutter speed or, you know, your frame rates, right? So you press that and then you just kind of scroll through there. So there's two options on the screen or on the camera itself. So Kinfinity's uh, menu system is quite nice actually. It's very simple, straight to the point. Um, there isn't like any extra menus you have to kind of dive into like some other camera brands. So as soon as you open up your menu, you have the recording. And as you dive into this, you come into the recording codex. And this camera only shoots in ProRes. So you have ProRes HQ, you have ProRes 422, ProRes LT, uh, Proxy, and 444XQ. Did I forget a four? I don't know and then uh, ProRes 4444. Um, this is a multi-sensor camera, so you have a Super 35, which is the native sensor size, and then you can punch into Micro Four Thirds, uh, Super 16 and 16 mil. The reason why you would do this, if you have lenses that can't cover Super 35, there are some really still popular lenses out there in the filmmaking world that is just for Micro Four Thirds or for Super, six, Super 16. So that's why you wanna kinda swap out to those different formats. Under the resolutions, you have a ton of different options. I'm not gonna switch them in and out because I'm, my feet's gonna cut out <laughs> from this recording here. But essentially, if you're in the highest resolution, which is 6K open gate, um, and if I went down to 3K, 3.2, uh, there won't be a significant crop because it's upscaling, um, only if you're in that top resolution. You have projects. This is where you just set up the settings for your project as you're about to film. So you have frame rates. This is where actually your aspect ratio lives. And it's no custom options just yet, but you have a bunch of flavors that are popular, 133, 15, 18, 2, and some vertical anamorphic uh, ratios, which is great to see because I love vertical anamorphic. And then your project and your slate. And this is gonna allow you to put all the information that you need. Uh, time code, you have your settings here. Exposure and uh, custom. So I set my exposure to EI to kind of tour, tour around with it. There's a feature in this camera where you can adjust your highlight tone. Um, basically, if you see a scene like this and you want to uh, recover more of your highlights in camera, you can kind of push that uh, the sensitivity towards that. Um, but I set it to EI and I noticed that gets disabled, which allows it to automatically do that and gives me that stop. So I kind of, I'm playing around with this, uh, all kind of theoretical right now, but because you can see this next setting is ISO highlight and I'm at its native ISO, which is 800 and it's already going to have a fixed highlight priority for that, I guess you can say. You can have custom frame rates and then custom shutter as well. 
and then your SSD settings, your format, your timer mating, or you can have capacity, whichever you like, format, and you can delete the last clip. Um, and that's it for recording. Very simple, let's get into monitoring real quick. So the first thing is your auto white balance is gonna ask you to put a gray card in front of here, but we don't have a gray card, obviously. We just have my little dinosaur, as you can see. And then guide, this is great here because you have a lot of flexibility, a lot of options. Um, it's hard to actually see my, my custom settings here. So I'm gonna put my flag on real quick. And this gives you a bunch of options here. I'm actually just come out of this to set up guides basically. So I have a safety guide, which is these little hashtag, hash marks on the edges uh, so I can watch my framing. And then inside you have a rectangle box, which is the 16 by nine aspect ratio. So that's gonna be my safety. Um, and then I'm just going to jump ahead real quick and then go to monitoring settings and then blanking. Blanking is basically just a mat that goes over top. And since I do a lot of 916 filming, I'm gonna have my mat here and I can have all that on top of each other so I can kind of keep an eye on all my framing at once, which is quite nice and I have all customizable options for this. I can take this off, I guess now, you guys already saw. So there's that, and if I go back to menu, let's go back to guide real quick. Again, you have every little bit of customization here to make it just as you want it. And then further down, you have full motion bars. I've never used this before. Uh, monochrome bars, uh, monochrome 22 bars. If anybody knows what these are specifically for, it sounds like broadcast to me, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, color bars, and then of course your rule of thirds. Monitoring settings. Again, this here is actually for your white balance listing, similar to how uh, ISO kind of does it. You can have a simpler version of it or a more uh, custom customizable adjustments. So I have mine set to simple, but if you set it to full and then press this, if you have this in full, this allows you to change your white balance in, in increments of 100. <laughs> Uh, I said that weird, but you know what I mean. But if you have it to simple, it gives you fixed, simple measurements. And then you can still have the ability to customize it, dial, dial it in. I'm gonna keep it like this, is this easier? Zebras, I don't use zebras. Waveform base, you can either choose to base the exposure off of your LUT or the Kinney, uh, log, uh, Kinney log. You have the size of the waveform, short, medium, full. You have your shutter angle here, which I prefer. And then your zoom frame direction. Uh, this is set to uh, horizontal, so if I hit this push, if I push in here to punch in, you can see you can go left and right here. And then you have your SDI options. If you had it like a small SD or something, it would just turn off and you just be a clean feed out. Um, and I can push the LUT to it and the frame rates to it as well. And then your LUT, like I was just saying, you can add, you can import LUTs, which I haven't done yet, which I need to. Um, Next one is your audio, very straightforward, and you can power whatever mics from there. All the adjustments are in here as well, as well as your headphone jack. Now, getting on to the settings, there aren't customizable buttons on here, from, from my knowledge, as I make this video today, but there is custom presets, so you can go in and then change those presets to your liking and then have a quick save to go to those menus as you're going through it. Um, Digital Horizon, there's a little horizon bar at the bottom here, so you can stay leveled. Playback option, you can play, it plays at the end of the clip or the beginning of the clip, depending on what you choose. Sync, so when you hit record, there's gonna be an uh, audible tally and a beep. Um, you'll hear the beep as a recording onto the media as well. So the models, the Mark IIs, they don't have built-in NDs as you already know. Uh, so you can either get the adapters that have a PL and an EF, they have the ENDs built in, and that's where you can control this. Uh, this does have an active E-mount, so I can say, if I had a E-mount lens that has iris controls in the lens, I can just change it from here and use that dial for that. So that's all that means. And then getting down to the last little bit of uh, information here from the menu is just the system stuff. So your battery information, I like this little feature. I have it set to 12. I think it comes by default. For instance, if this is going to die, like it is about to die soon, it's at 19%, um, it will show you a, uh, a warning and a countdown. So it won't just shut off you completely. It's gonna tell you that it's about to shut down as a safety thing. So that's a nice little feature. Uh, the fan speed network, this is for like Wi-Fi and streaming and stuff. System settings, you can export your settings. A lot of this is just so straightforward. I'm not gonna even bother with the rest of them. But this is a nice menu. It doesn't need to be complicated and they made it as simple as they could. So there you have it. There's the menu. Now you know how to operate this camera without even having it. <laughs>
So there you have it. There's the end of the video. Let me know if you have any more questions in the comments below and make sure to check out the links in the description. Stay tuned because again, there will be more content about this camera as well as I haven't forgotten the X-H2S. I still own it, it's still a fantastic camera. So I would do some comparisons to that at least in terms of the image and possibly the 6K Pro. When it comes to other comparisons, I just don't have the time to get other cameras, compare them and then try to put out a video. So no promises here with trying to do that. Um, but what I will do is do everything I can to understand this camera and share that information to you all. All right. I'll see y'all later. Deuces.